The beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my friends, here we are again. This is the last Sunday in Advent. Christmas is soon here. All believers eagerly wait for the big day that is just around the corner. No season of the year is like this one in popularity and merriment. This is a season of universal acceptance. It reaches even into the hearts of the unbeliever. And even the aggressive atheists of our world are affected by this great day because they continually try to destroy it, knowing the influence it brings to those of us who await the Savior's birth. And that's strange, isn't it? That the magic words, Merry Christmas, seem to bring into people's hearts some sort of response. And think of all of the gifts that are beautifully wrapped, laid under the tree, waiting to be opened. And most people are eagerly waiting to tear off the wrapping paper to see what's inside. Children are looking at the Christmas tree every day before Christmas, analyzing and speculating on what present they will receive. And adults are like children. We can get so busy in this season that we don't even take time to open up the real gift of Christmas. It's very difficult to get across to many people how easy it is to let the real meaning of Christmas just slip away. And in spite of all the beautiful things that are in the church and in many homes, most people are only busy paying attention to the material side of this event. There's just this rampant commerciality, if you will, about it all. There's a blatant glamour that seems to go no deeper than a, than a plastic Christmas tree. There are so many people who are not going to open the gift that I want to open this morning because they are just too busy. But I want you who are here today to open it. And I want everyone who hears my voice to open up that which really matters, the gift of gifts. Today's reading is found in the book of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 31 through verse 39. If you are able, I would ask that you rise out of glorious respect for our Heavenly Father. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent John, and he, was, he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I received is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is the only truth. Please be seated. So here we are in the season of Christmas. But what is this season? Just a merry-making event with an office party or a drinking frenzy with friends? Or some fancy colorful decorations on a tree? Or is it just a few lights that glamorize the society in which we live? Is that all Christmas is? My friends, he's right. No, it isn't. That's not it at all. There were no lights in the Bethlehem manger. Nothing in that stable where Jesus lay, but animals in the barnyard smell that went around, along with them. And there were no bright lights in the inn. As a matter of fact, there wasn't even room for the Christ child. Yet today we have gift-wrapped this season to such an extent 
that we would think that Christmas is some sort of artificial creation of humanity. And sadly, that's exactly what it has become. A synthetic fabrication made for and by people. My friends, there is only one gift of Christmas. The greatest gift of gifts is Jesus Christ, our Savior. God sent his gift to the world. He arrived in Bethlehem as a baby over 2,000 years ago. And before Christmas, we are going to open that gift this morning in order that Christmas might mean something to you and to me. And we've got witnesses. We've got witnesses today. Witnesses who want to take the time to have us open the greatest of gifts. So let's start unwrapping it and see what we uncover. The first witness to come forward today is John the Baptizer. That great, powerful, strong, and faithful man of God. Mark 1.4 reads, John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Let's see this gift of gifts as John saw it. Who was Christ to John the Baptist? John saw Jesus as the Lamb of God, the sin bearer, the Messiah, the Savior of all people. Do you? Does Christmas really take hold of your very soul and of your heart and your mind? Do you really believe that Jesus came into the world to die? Do you truly understand the cross? Loved ones, there's no beauty in the cross. It is a shameful thing. It is cold and dark. It has slivers and it has nails. And it is repulsive in its true appearance. And it brings a curse to all people. Do you believe that about Christmas? Or is Christmas to you just a nice little baby in a nice little manger with nice little shepherds and nice little wise men and a nice smelling perfume? If so, you had better unwrap the gift and see what John sees. John is telling us that the highest price was paid for that faith in Christ. You see, John the baptizer died believing that Jesus was God's gift to the world. And John's entire life centered in readying the world to meet Jesus. He was a voice. John was a burning and shining lamp. He was completely dedicated to this man, Jesus. And he knew without any question that Christ was superior to all others. You see, John saw the tremendous difference between those of this world and this gift of gifts, this man, Jesus Christ. John the baptizer is an example to every generation to uphold the Christ at all costs. Christmas will never mean anything apart from this self-dedication. Every Christian should look at Jesus as John looked at Jesus and see him as the, the Lamb of God, the only one who can take away our sin. But we have other witnesses. As we continue to unwrap the gift, another witness comes forward. It is Christ Jesus himself. And he says in John 5, 36, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. Jesus is telling us, I want you to see me as the Savior of the world. I want you to see me as the one who is bringing miracles into the world. Miracles of healing not only of the body, but of the soul. I want you to look at what I have done. I want you to see me as, as at the grave of Lazarus as I rose him up. I want you to see me touching the people and healing them. I want you to see what I have told you to do, how to live your life. My only concern is that people will see me as, as God sent by the Father to bring grace and mercy, love and peace to the world. 
Christ is saying to us, are you frightened? Are you worried? Do you have problems? Is there sorrow that has touched your life? Loved ones, Jesus came for that. He wants us to see himself as he truly is before Christmas. Otherwise, Christmas has absolutely nothing but artificial meaning. It is nothing more than a plastic tree. But if you know Jesus, as you unwrap this gift of gifts, you see Jesus as the only one who can touch you. You see Christ as the only one who can bring healing into your soul. So the question is, do you see him as the great physician who can straighten out that problem, whatever it is, and bring peace out of trouble? Do you see Christ as the only savior from sin and death and the power of the devil? Do you see him as the only one that can give you the victory over any problem, any oppression, or any addiction in which you have found yourself? If you are shackled by a certain temptation and a certain sin, do you know that he can touch you and make you whole? Jesus, by his works, shows us who he is. Do you believe that at Christmas time? Or does the high spirited hollowness that takes place all around you become the essence of it all? But there is yet still another witness. He takes the gift and opens it. It is the Father himself. God the Father saw his only Son as the one who was sent to carry out the program of salvation. John 5.37 reads, And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. You see, the Father saw Jesus as the one whom he watched over from the moment he came into that bed in that dirty stable in Bethlehem. And it was the Father that sent an angel to Mary before Jesus was born and said in Luke 1.35, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And it was the Father through his messenger who sent Joseph to Egypt to protect Jesus and flee from the wrath of King Herod. Matthew 2.13 reads, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And it was an angel sent from the father who came again to tell Joseph it was now safe to return. Matthew 2, 19 and 20 reads, but when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And it was God the Father who admiringly spoke from heaven when Jesus was baptized. Matthew 3, 17. This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. So my friends, do you see God as intervening in history for a redemptive purpose? You must answer that question before Christmas. Otherwise, Christmas will have no real meaning for you. Do you realize that a person literally hates God when they fail to believe in Jesus Christ because the Father sent him? Have you ever thought about that? God sent his son to die for the world in order that the world might be saved. When a person says no to that salvation, when a person says no to Jesus, that is hating God. My friends, it is imperative for us this day, only three days before Christmas, to emphasize to ourselves that it was the Father's love that sent the Son to be born and that I honor the Father when I honor the Son since the Father sent him. Have you thought about that before Christmas? 
But there's a fourth and final witness today. This witness which helps us to see the gift of gifts is the witness of God's divine truth. This witness is God's holy Bible given to us for our rescue. 2 Timothy 3.16 reads, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The Bible is the wonderful, powerful Word of God. And it is the Christian's chief resource for living this life. Psalm 119, 105, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It is the Bible that sees Christ in prophecy and fulfillment. It is the Bible which forever and always is God's will to all people. It is the Bible that tells us in the Old Testament of Christ's coming. And it is the Bible that tells us in the New Testament that he has come. And it is the Bible that tells that Jesus Christ is the only thing that matters for all ages of history. And without Christ... The Bible loses its purpose and direction. From beginning to end, the Bible testifies of Christ. You see, if one wishes to get rid of Christ, they must get rid of the Bible. And when one eliminates the Bible, they eliminate all knowledge and all revelation of God. And then human life has no meaning, for there is no certainty apart from the voice of Scripture. So let me ask you, how many Bibles are being read now during this Advent season? How many of the busy shoppers running around from here and there take time to say, you know, Jesus is the only gift that matters because that's what the Bible says. Sadly, that's not what you will hear. But you and I, we must proclaim the only message that counts this Christmas that Christ loved me so much that he died for me. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. So this morning I want to direct your attention to this, the only way of salvation. I want to have you open the gift of gifts before Christmas. And I want it to be done in order that this special day, Christmas, may have real meaning in your life. It's going to be yet another empty Christmas for so many people. They are not going to listen to what I said, nor to what the Word of God teaches. They are not going to listen to what Jesus Christ himself tells us and they won't pay attention to what the Father says or what John the Baptizer says. They're going to continue to just grow older and keep moving into that area of life apart from Christ. And then they will say they had a very Merry Christmas. Strange, isn't it? How a person can twist and turn and give only for themselves some sort of false happiness apart from the real gift of Christmas. Loved ones, do you really want to celebrate Christmas? If your answer is yes, then take a look at the Father and the Son and see John the Baptist and open up your Bibles. These four witnesses will announce to you that there is no true joy unless there is first an inner peace. All the pills, all the booze, all the drugs and pot in the world designed only to numb and shut off a nervous system will not in the eventual end bring you any peace because that can only be found in Jesus because Christ is the only one who came to bring me love and salvation and to give me peace. God's wonderful and loving gift of salvation was made known before Christ's birth. His coming was long foretold. 
some people have not opened God's gift of redemption to let the Christ child into their hearts. So the gift of gifts remains unopened. And what can Christmas possibly mean to anyone who has not received from God the gift of grace? What emptiness for those who celebrate a Christless Christmas again this year. Loved ones, open your hearts to receive Jesus today. This final Sunday in Advent is the time to let Christ in your hearts so that when Christmas comes, it might be for you and your family what God has always meant it to be, salvation and eternal life for all who will believe. So this morning, let us come in real joy and peace to the manger. Let us truly sing glory to the newborn king. Let us listen intently this Christmas for the angels singing loudly on high, glorifying Christ in heaven. And let us all honestly come and see what this event is really all about. That the Savior of all people has intimately come to change my life and to bring me eternal joy, eternal peace, and eternal life. The gift of gifts is right here to you from God with love. Open it. Then be in church on Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to celebrate the real Christmas. Glorious Father, thank you so much for your word, Father. It's so clear. Let our hearts and our minds be open to your word and let us let the Savior, the Christ child of Bethlehem, penetrate into our lives. Let this Christmas be the Christmas that it's supposed to be for us, celebrating you as the Savior of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.